Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. I'm Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach. Every Tuesday, my goal is to put on the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry so that if you're a mat branch manager, you've always got a place to take your team. If you're a regional leader, you've always got content to pull from for your regional meetings and a place to drive your branch managers. Uh, today, my special guest is my good friend who I've known for gosh, more years than I can count now, Robert. But, uh, and and he's been a consultant for me for, for years, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to get Robert's advice. Uh, we've got Mr. Robert Stover. What's up, Stover? How's it going, Dave? I'm excited about to get you. I am. So, so by the way, Robert, I think I told this to you, but you, you were one of the most highest rated um, guests in last year. So you, you killed it. I think I interviewed you at least three times and you were the highest rated calls. And when I, I started asking people, hey, what were the best interviews of 2017? You, you were on the list. So thanks wow. for all the value last year. Well, thanks for the pressure. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so before we get into Robert's content, which is really, he's gonna provide us with thinking tools, you know, like how can we think better, smarter to create massive breakthroughs? You know, he, he's calling them legendary results so that literally you're a legend, you know. And by the way, not just a legend in your own mind, but a legend within your company, legend. A, leverage, a legend within your state, you know, and maybe even a legend within the United States. But, you know, big results and how to think to think bigger. So that is what we're going to talk about. Um, before I get into that conversation with Robert, I wanted to just pull some takeaways from um, Mastermind. So I was just at Mastermind 2018, Stephen Marshall's event. George W. Bush was the opening speaker. Um, he was awesome. I mean, I, I just have to think, regardless of what your politics are and whether you love his politics or not, you have to respect him as a human being. Uh, it was a great conversation. That Stephen did an incredible job of interviewing him. I was like going, God, he's better than me. And I do a lot of interviews. Uh, so Stephen did a great job. George W. Bush had, he was funny, he gave, gave some great wisdom. It was, it was incredible. Uh, there was just a lot of great speakers. I want to, I want to shine a light on Tim Brahim because while there were a lot of great speakers, I think Tim crushed it. He had, he was on stage a lot, um, both the main stage and then the secondary stage, but he just connected at an emotional level. And, and really my big takeaway was just how valuable, important the last interview I did was with um, Tim was, where he talked about when you're meeting with a family, how you need to, you know, convince them that you're the right loan officer to help them get this loan for this home. But at that same time, you're building a lifelong relationship with them. You know, you're telling them and showing them how you're going to be their lender for life and how they're gonna build wealth with real estate because you're their lender for life. So I, I just wanna remind folks, if you haven't listened to that interview, do it, check it out. And then, and then by the way, more important, that was the other thing that was a big takeaway. It's not about just showing up at the event, it's actually taking action from it. So if you've already watched that interview with Tim, I would just ask you to ask yourself, am I executing, you know, am I, is that the conversation I'm having with borrowers and families? Um, and if it's not, I, I just can't recommend enough. That was another takeaway is that even super successful people last year and the year before and for the decades of the past, they're, they're struggling. You know, I, I interviewed a loan officer that I've interviewed multiple times yesterday, um, Linda McKinley out of Colorado, just kills it. And she's just gone through a lot of struggle and and her big quote was, I need to adopt, adapt or die as a mortgage professional, you know? And so, um, anyways, shine a light on that script, check it out. You were going to say something? On, on, on a metaphor for that? Um, yeah. A while back on my, on my personal email list, my kind of private journal list, um, I've been shooting a video down at the beach on uh, catching waves and, and riding other people's forces in the industry and stuff. And in the background, with lots of surfers and whatever. And I kind of ended with people surfing. Well, at the end, one of the surfers fell off his board or something as it came in. And so someone uh, emailed me and they're going like, dude, you should have cut the video before the guy fell. And I thought about that. I went, 
you want know no man i go that is life is uh, one thing i learned i i, I tracked uh ads from businesses starting in 1915 up to the 1950s i did like dozens of them and tracked hundreds or thousands of ads and um the one thing that came clear that i didn't expect to learn was all of those winning ads and campaigns fell they all came to an end at some point and so we're like like right now there's some guys out here that are surfing like woo cowabunga dude right yeah they're they're doing great the results are great your wave's gonna end you, you gotta be ready for it but then the good news is is some of the folks listening their wave ended right they, they fell in but guess what if you look out there's always another wave coming in there's another right. wave paddle back out and there's another wave there for you to catch so that that gets to these people that are doing great and now they've fallen but there's another wave out there so that you know those are the two truths one everything's going to quit working but two there's always something else out there you can jump on and surf coming forward yeah and that by the way that reminds me also of marketing you know i can remember when email first came out it was like oh, what what an awesome fax, channel and fax machines and, and it was kill well, it was killing facts. But by the way, us as marketers, we screwed it up. I mean, now email is like, you know, noise. And I mean, there's still ways of using email and productively. But right now, you know, text. And by the way, I see loan officers and we're starting to mess it up where we're putting spam in in, in text. But it's it's a it's a new way, uh, you know, Facebook Messenger it's a new way now these are just channels um so Roger, i think it's a great segue for us to get into these call it thinking tools so i, I don't know you know if there is anybody on the call who hasn't you know listed the previous calls with you or interviews if you could just give a quick one minute on who you are and then let's get into you know thinking tools for legendary results oh one thing i do i've worked with legendary entrepreneurs like dave savage over the years and some other gurus in the industry and stuff and and my personal thing like there's a, um, a lot of guys out there that focus on the productivity thing they're awesome at it um i'm not your productivity guy but what i love are those breakthroughs the, those leaps so if, if you need the leap up that's that's what i work on and so I, i've helped a bunch of little businesses go from credit cards to 15 million 16 million or uh one company doing seven to 25 million mainly using marketing levers and um and, and strategy and changing up their strategy and their approaches and stuff so that's what i love doing and it and it's some of the Wait. thinking i've done i want to share on that today so so by the way he's being very humble stover was has consulted with todd duncan and i and some of the things like conference calls you know the whole concept of hey let's do conference calls to help loan officers mastermind Stover was part of that early innovation. Mortgage coach. I mean, the fact that mortgage coach is what it is today, Robert, you know, was a critical part of that in the early days, and he's still a good friend and mentor. Tom Ferry, Robert Stover, has consulted, and Tom would tell you he's one of the smartest, best marketing consultants he's ever had. Tony Robbins. For those of you that were at Mastermind, Jay Abraham was on stage. And Robert has has helped Jay Abraham and learned from Jay Abraham. So Silver's being very modest. Uh, he's helped, you know, I always think of this kind of like the guru's guru, you know, the people that are speakers that are playing at a really high level. A lot of them have learned a lot of things from Silver. So so Robert, rock it out, buddy. All right. Well, thanks. Let's see if the screen share works. Yeah, right. Let's see if he's not good with technology. So if this takes, oh, Silver, you're getting better. Is the uh, can you see legendary results? Uh, no. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of small. We see the light bulb, and it's taken yeah, up about a thirty inch screen. The back. Let's see if this. He'll get it, everybody. Oh, boom! It's taken up full screen. What? Okay, made some technology work here. But before we get to the modern technology, so like like you said, what what I wanted to do today was not talk about scripts and dialogues and 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 that kind of stuff for you. But are these larger thinking tools that, that I've used, like when I think about someone's business or I'm consulting with them, what I'll take them through or a process I'll take a group through. And I want to show those tools with you because they're 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 awesome. If, if you guys can see, I don't know, Savage, you can give me a shout out if you can see this. I've got a crowbar here in my hands. Um, I can see your crowbar. crowbar. It's yellow. It's big. I, I thought it, people could see it. 
So this crowbar instantly multiplies my strength 10 to 20 times. Um, for example, if I'm pulling a nail up, um, even like one of the strongest men on the planet would have trouble reaching into a board and pulling a nail out without like tearing his hands apart. Um, but by using a simple tool like this, my eight year old can and does do it. And if you need a little more leverage you can go to that side, right? So what these tools are today, if, if, if a simple tool like that can multiply your response or your, your, your strength by 10 times instantly, you don't have to wait, you don't have to learn how to use a crowbar, you don't have to go to crowbar school, right? That tool instantly multiplies your strength. So I've got these thinking tools that I use that essentially do the same. Um, how you think, your perception, your imagination, your creativity, your knowledge, your innovation, um, your perception of a situation and what it, what's even reality in things are massive leverage that you have to, to multiply your results. And, and as we go along here, I'll share some stuff that like, you know, if I told you you could increase your sales 300% in two weeks, um, you think I'm insane, but we've done that. And we did it using one of the specific tools I'm going to share you, share with you here. So anyway, that's what I wanted to get into. To get started here, let me get the, um, this bad boy fired up. All right, now you all know my top secret password. Um, I want you to think right now, we all have big goals and aspirations and things we want to do. Um, what are the obstacles standing in your path right now? And I really want you, and Dave, if you can help me out and read in the comments while I'm doing this. Um, I really want you guys to share what the obstacles are, because what I want to do is load your minds for the rest of the process we're going to go through today. So start, Dave, if you can start shouting out, guys, start writing in what your obstacles are. Um, it can be business, so everybody in your life. Um, as it goes along, these processes are universal to work with everything. So um, go ahead and start in the box there, start typing. And um, Dave, can you let me know when people start yep. coming so, through? So everybody in the box, in questions, start putting your obstacles. Now, again, in today's market, I know rate shoppers, rates are an obstacle. Closing loans is an obstacle. But again, this is business or personal. Leadership, getting people to do what you want them to do can be an obstacle. So here we go, Robert. Knowledge, um, value, rejection, discipline. I've never heard that word before, but I like it. Lack of quality referral partners, love that. Call reluctance. Thank you for your transparency. By the way, more people have that obstacle than people admit. Uh, great one. Uh, quality, getting referral partners. By the way, getting meetings with realtors obstacle, um, getting qualified referrals, data, getting people on the phone who want to talk to me, uh, uh, underwriters, <laughs> love yeah. that, uh, underwriters, uh, Appraisers. all reluctantly, discipline, getting, oh, I love this, getting through the noise, getting through the noise. By the way, let's, if you want to keep rifting folks, keep it coming. But I, I love that one, getting through the, oh, wait, here's more. Um, micromanaging, follow-up systems, technology. By the way, feel free to keep them coming, but I'm not gonna share anymore. I think you got enough to work with, Robert. Got it. And, and the big thing is, is not for me, is I want them to actually have them down. So even if they haven't shared them publicly or whatever, um, or they haven't shared their real one, I, I can't see the results, but um, if they, if they don't want to share the real one, go ahead and write it down and then keep it in mind as we kind of go through this process. All right. So all that stuff is standing in the way. So let's let's look at a ladder here. We're going to walk over a, uh, a kind of a strategic ladder. And we'll put that. Those are your problems. And I'll put it on the step. We'll put them in red there. Uh, there we go. So problems. So when I come into businesses at, or where I work with people, here's what I get. I'm not getting enough leads. I'm not getting this. People give me problems, right? Or sometimes worse, sometimes better. The next step. So look, look, Dave, I'm going to throw it out and make this really interactive with the group if I can, if they, if they, if they play well here. Um, if you've got problems and let's, let's look at some of what these were. Um, 
let's call it, uh, you got a problem with the noise or you've got a problem with call reluctance or you've got a, a problem getting meeting, let's take meetings with realtors. Instantly, um, what do you need? So if people can start pipe typing in, for example, on realtors, um, okay, I got a problem with realtors, what do I need? And then Dave, once they start coming in, if you can shout out. So, 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 again, so what, what do they need to solve that problem with realtors? Is yeah. that the question, Robert? Yeah. Okay, guys. So if your problem was meeting with realtors, what do you need? Uh, they, you need contact information, need to know what to say, um, need to get over call reluctance, uh, overcome fear. Uh, what what can I offer them that is better than the lenders with the same products? So kind of that noise thing, how do I, how can I say something different? Um, keep it coming guys. So so by the way, I am, while you guys are doing it, keep, keep doing this. I do want to remind folks, you know, I've got incredible interviews on what to say, most recently with Cindy Ertman, but that, you know, five questions to ask realtors by Jeremy Forcier, amazing. Uh, but I also want to remind folks, sometimes you just got to do it, but I'll, I'll let Robert get to that. Demonstrate my value before working together, how to overcome the instant no. Oh, I love that. You know, like they're just programmed to say no, you know, I need to, I need to come over. Um, I just need to get them on the phone. Like I can't even talk to them or get them to respond to anything. That's what I take out of that. For the most part, realtors are no longer in their offices to meet with them. So how do I meet? Where do I meet? Um, all right, Stover, that's what I got. Well, this is great because the last ones is like my evil plan came together here. So, so here's the other area. If I walk into a company, um, and, and very often, for example, I was working with a, a, a major company that sold to the real estate industry and they were targeting managers or just their sales team. We're targeting managers and they, they had a, a, a preset, what do you call it, a, like a, a video training system they were selling to the management of a, a real estate office. And so here's the problem is they're having objections. And when I come in, either people tell me about the problems or they tell me about the solution they need. So we've been having trouble with objections. So what we need is training in objection handling, right? So they predetermined what their solution was. And that sounds good, and we all do that instinctively, but as we're going to see here in a minute, that really blocks you from coming up with the breakthrough solution. Uh, but before we get to how you how you break, because it seems common sense, we're taught, we're trained, we're problem solvers, I've got a problem with objections, I need objection handling. But there's a, but there's a whole other level at it, at it. So the other place that people end up here is kind of this... Um, loop from hell right here which is their brain goes oh i need to contact realtors and then instantly they start going down here and going well i get an instant no so i remember i asked for solutions so when i say when i try and call realtors i get an instant no that's not a solution that's a that's a problem to carrying out or the, to the objective of getting meetings with realtors I can't get them on the phone. That's not a solution. So what they end up with is, okay, I've got a problem. I can't get um, meetings with realtors. Meetings with realtors is the, the uh, solution I want. Um, and instantly, they like they went to phone. Um, in face place meetings, instant no's. So people started generating problems on achieving the objective when they go. You don't want to get stuck there. So what I want you guys is to leapfrog, we're going to leapfrog past this a little bit as we go along. The, the place to play the game is up here, which is purpose. Or if I spell it wrong, purpose. So purpose. How we get from a solution to a purpose is why. And I usually ask it three to four times. So let me give you an example. The, the, the folks with the objection handling, um, they jump to the solution is they hired me to come in to do objection handling training, um, how to handle objections. And so I said, well, that's great. And I can do that. But why do you want to handle objections? 
you know, and they look at me like I'm crazy, right? And um, well, we want to make more sales. And I'm like, okay. So if I solve the solution at the level of making more sales versus handling objections, do you care how I get there? And they're like, no. So I just jumped up a strategic level over their problem. And then I went further. Well, why do you want to make sales? And again, you know, they kind of look at me like, you idiot, because we want to make money, right? So make more money. Well, why do you want to make more money? And in this particular business, business's case, they wanted to sell out or cash out. Well, why do you want to cash out? Well, and then we get to, and so eventually you end up to, I want to live a life in Nirvana, right? I want no work, lots of money, travel the world, whatever your ideal is. I've got one associated, associate and his ideal is eight kids, which he's accomplished now. So um, what I want you guys to do is take a look at the solutions. So if, if the problem you have is contacting realtors, what are the potential, let's get clear on absolute solutions. Okay, I got a column. Um, I've got to overcome fear. That's assuming a solution. So I'm going to ask you, well, what do you really want? If you're contacting realtors, why? It sounds like a crazy question, but let's, let's kick the notch up a level. So Dave, start reading off. So everybody write down why on earth you'd ever want to talk to a realtor and get a meeting with them. So come on guys, community exercise, you know, hopefully you're following along. You're not just listening. Hopefully you're not on your mobile phone doing, you know, responding to emails. Of course, you're watching this on your, you're, you're on your, you're on your mobile phone on this call and you're on your desktop responding to emails. You know, this is an opportunity to upgrade your thinking. And by the way, more importantly, learn tools so that when you know, you're outside of this call, you can actually elevate and be more strategic. Because when I interview the best of the best, yes, they all are great communicators. They all have great presentations. They all use Mortgage Coach, but you know what they all do? They're all really intentional about what they do so that they're working on the smart things. They're doing this stuff. So guys, let's get with it. Um, oh yeah, we they rock, the team rocked it out here. So um, they can provide warm leads. Okay, I, you kind of get into the mix there. I don't, but I know I should. Hang on, I'm reading through this because they are the main party in the transaction. That's a why. Um, that's a good question. Um, great source for purchases. So again, obvious, but nevertheless, making positive resources. They meet buyers, relationship building, to make money, to close more loans, um, networking opportunities. So customers, I'm, I'm these, Dave, more money and loans, more loans equals more money, right? Yeah, they, so that's kind of a common thing. Like realtor, why? Leads, why? Loans, why? Money, right? Right. So the, each one of those is a completely different strategic level if we sit down and brainstorm it. And so the question is, where do you really want to be playing the game when you're doing this? Do we want to be down to, and we can, we can choose how to, how to um, well, my problems leads, my solutions, realtors. Or we can go, well, the only reason I want to talk to a realtor is warm, hot, tasty leads. And so I need, let me take it up a notch to leads. As soon as I move from realtor to leads, I, I call this kind of a nested, let's see if I can do this here. I'm gonna, you get these nested boxes. And so realtor, what's above a realtor? Um, loans. Uh, I'm sorry, leads and then loans. And then somewhere up here, you got money, right? So as we move up each level, your opportunities or possibilities expand as you as you move up a level. So if I ask the question, well, how do I get through to a realtor to take my call? That's one level of solutions. If I raise it to how do I get warm, hot leads? That opens up a huge variety of options I have to go after the, the issue. So then if I go up to how do I get loans? That's a whole other area. 
And then if I take it up to, well, how do I make more revenue? That includes um, reducing your expenses, leveraging out, hiring assistants, doing teams, right? So, so now that a whole another level of play as we go along. So as people look at this, what I'd like them to do is determine for themselves what why do they want to play this level at i'm fine if they want to go to i want realtors um i'm also fine if they go up to leads or or loans or money but it it's, comes down to you if you and i are talking um we can work through this right but so so we're going to do this as a big group today so i'm curious where those of you that are going through this process where do you want to play the game at strategically do you want to play the game at realtors or do you want to play it at leads and loans or do you want to pay play it at profit and revenue um which level strategic level it's there's no right or wrong answer what this is is gives your thinking variation as you go through and so like my my uh my client that said we need objection handling <clears throat> we change the level to how do i increase sales at that level, we brought in a ton of other tools and we'll get into kind of what we did for them, but it's playing the game at a whole different level. And it, it allowed for a much broader range of solution, a more powerful solution. So for the folks in the call, they get a pick, but a lot of it comes to comfort, personal goals, um, where they feel their skills at. Um, let me have you write in the box, what level you want to play the purpose game at? Let me know when they start coming through there, Dave. So guys, what level do you want to play in the purpose box? Let me know. Come on, bring it in. Stover, just to get everybody clear on the question, one more time, repeat it, and then start ripping right. everybody. So, so, so basically we're going to ask why, call it three to five times. So I want to get more realtors. That kind of came out here. I want to get conversations with realtors. Why? Well, so I can get their leads or loans. Um, all right, do I want to play the game at getting conversations with realtors or do I want to play the game at a higher strategic level of getting leads in general? Or do I want to play at a slightly higher level of loans? Got it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Loans, <clears throat> solutions, closed loans, solutions, has to be a 10, realtors, loans and good realtors, leads, leads to pre-qualified potential buyers. Be the best advisor, purpose, purpose, realtor, objection, solutions. I'm just reading it off stream of conscious. Sure. Uh, money, dollar amounts, happy buyers, leads and loans. Um, feel free, guys. And by the way, if whether you share it online socially, I'm not putting names behind any of this, or you do it yourself, follow along. And if you're watching this video, feel free to put it on pause. Think about it answer the question if you're a manager on this this is a great meeting to have with your your team whether it's a new loan officer or a loan officer that's getting stuck that you want to unstick you know make this kind of a workshop that you take them through and you know put it on pause you know create a worksheet that you're going to follow it's just a great thinking tool for you personally and then for all you leaders on here for you guys to use so loans build referrals um and if nothing else, we're getting you guys to think at a deeper level. Or higher level. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, deeper, higher, better. Whatever. Smarter, first. faster. Back to you, Silver. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, because I'm doing it. So I'm going to pick loans, hot, tasty loans as the, um, the highest purpose. So um, two sessions ago here, we walked up the stairs up the staircase going this way. So we kind of climbed up the purpose ladder, but now to get results in the world world, we're going to reverse it and we're going to come back down, but we're going to come down a little bit smarter. So uh, loans, that's, that is our star objective here that we're going to go after. So loans, now we're going to come down to this step and i first read about this step in a guy's book from 1919. he was a management consultant and his magic wand was something called specification which won't mean anything yet 
And um, he would go in and he'd say, okay, here's what you want to do. And everybody started giving solutions. Remember we talked about solution thinking, I need objection handling training. Instead, he went, <coughs> excuse me, stop that. Because when you start saying, oh, what I need is, and, and as soon as I put down get more loans, everybody on here instantly jumped to ideas or solutions on how to do it, which is fine. It's part of the process. But, but we're going to take a break and we're going to do specification. Specification is a generalized solution without naming the solution. Um, let, let me give you an example. I need a new car. Okay. Um, a specification would be, I need transportation. Um, well, well, you can ride a bike. Okay, well then that, and you kind of go around the circle here. Well, you know, when it's raining, that's not gonna be so great. And I call on uh, million dollar entrepreneurs. And so that's not gonna be so great riding up on my bike unless I do the uh, reverse snob eco warrior thing, right? Um, so, so I'm up at transportation. So then I start putting in criteria like what I will or won't do. And so what I come up with is something like, um, um, I need dependable, tra dependable all weather transportation that makes me look good for under $500 a month. Let's just call that our specification. By writing that, I didn't say ever say car or bike or train or bus in there, right? Or Uber. So by using a specification, we're not clamping down what I get, what I call get solution life. We're not going, Handling objections. That's what we have to do. Call five guys, bring them in, have us give it a pitch and who does the best objection handling. And if we're being really cute, let's give them objections while they're doing it and see which guy really does it the best. Right. So that's a solution lock that people get. For example, right now, it's just the way it is. Um, people call, ring, ring. Hi, what do you need? I need Facebook advertising. That's solution lock. They're, they're not going. What I need is a way to bring in leads in a cost effective way. Um, that close very within say 30 days or that close within a 10 day cycle. Um, that is a specification. So let's take wherever you guys were on the strategy ladder there going up um, at what level you chose to play at. And for here, I just took loans, but you can take your own. And I want you to write a quick specification for this. And let, let's get, let's do some feedback, put your specification in, Dave will read it and let's see if we can refine it or if you just if you if you nail it and get the idea because I want to make sure you get this idea because it really breaks you out of that solution lock and and there's a couple of cool things about specification one it, it dramatically expands your thinking and the available um, ideas that you're able to come up with two <clears throat> it lets you shop a solution you can bring in a consultant, you can bring in an advisor, you can go to another company that generates leads and go, what we need is the specification. And it lets them use their creativity in solving it. Um, I'm not good at everything, Dave's not good at everything, but if we can go out and write a good specification, other people can do the job for us. And so being king of specification is, is awesome. So start writing some specifications and this might take just a little bit, it's a little longer than a one word answer, um robert why don't we because it is a little harder to live why don't you kind of make up a couple examples to get everybody's mind working i'll give them a, another real one from smart reply so so back in the uh, dave dave had a early uh, mobile marketing i don't know what you call it not an ad agency close to marketing company um early player in mobile marketing and as it went along and it also did auto, automatic auto dialing things like that the government was coming in and clamping down on legislation about how that was used. And um, and so it's like, okay, well, doom, we finally broke through, we're making money, and now the government's coming in with a regulation that's gonna kill our whole business. Um, but there are a couple things that the government said. Well, you can contact people that are customers, you can't use it for lead gen raw or cold lead gen and, and such. So we sat down and we wrote a specification. And it was like, okay, we need a customer that has a database of 100 to 200,000 to even make this make sense and a million would be better. We need a customer that um, has the ability to, um, to reach out to their database a minimum of once a month to make this economically viable. Um, 
at the time they've been working with a lot of lenders and stuff on their or, or on their lead gen and then once they did a program they were kind of done with it but so we needed something where we could get residual business going where they had a reason to reach out to their customer base over and over and over um and so we wrote out specifications like that we didn't say what the solution was and what that led to is we looked at our database um or clients and said who matches those specifications on industry and the answer that came out wasn't anything in the lending industry it was retailers retailers had databases of a million two million three million people they had weekly sales or or, or monthly sales seasonal sales they had a lot of reason to contact their database over and over and over so getting just one retailer would be the equivalent of getting like 100 lenders is business owners so that became the thing and it ironically there's only one of those clients in the database um but dave reorganized the whole strategy the round the, of the company to the retail industry and used that one customer as the lead area but we did it by writing a specification not by writing a specific solution if that makes sense that yeah makes sense. and by and by the way guys that one client was sports authority and within two years we had the gap best buy we had 80 of the top 200 retailers in America. We had a company that was not profitable to a you know $18 million a year in income business. And Stover was a, a key part of that. And, 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 and this, this right here did it. By the way, I want to use a couple examples in the mortgage business. Josh Metal, you know, when you look at, you know, I've interviewed him countless of times, and he ended up niching on um, doctors. So, I mean, he has built a mortgage practice around you know being the physician lender and if you you know go to google and type in you know doctor loan physician loan you know he's going to show up and he's killing it i mean there i just interviewed him a few weeks ago and he's on track for doing 1200 serving 1200 families this year so that's that is what we're talking about specification um so income generating loans clients that appreciate what the loan officer does higher loan amounts, buyers who need a mortgage, <laughs> um, high quality realtors. So Robert, you know, we haven't got a lot, like so far everybody's just been long list. Everybody's kind of hit a little bit of a, you know, rider block. And then we've, we've got some comments. Any, any feedback to help get us over the hump here? Yeah, I'll read off those three again. You had high quality realtors was the last one. What was the other two? Um, buyers who need a mortgage, jumbo loans, high loan amount loans, clients that appreciate what a local loan officer does, income generating units. Hmm. Um, how can we? So, so let's charge? take one, and I'm going to take some of this stuff and we'll write a specification, okay? Um, so we want loans. Can we pay? a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a lead or would that break us right so we need a qualification on um i need a way to generate um high quality loans at a cost of and you can specify you, you know your numbers 50 bucks 85 bucks 200 bucks um i've got a friend that plays on facebook and um he does consulting stuff and he generates um it costs him 200 dollars to get a sale, but the sale is worth $1,500 a uh, uh, month to him on each of those clients that he brings in. So, so he's got his specifications. He can go up to, let's call it a thousand bucks for a lead, not, not a lead, a buyer. Um, so, so his specification would be, you know, I need a way that automatically generates and that is under a thousand dollars or under in cost. Um, for the, for the, the other thing on leads is let's call scalability, Dave, because a lot of one off things they work and but they're not that scalable. And so let's let's go. I need a highly scalable way to generate leads at two hundred dollars per loan, closed loan. How does that sound on a specification? Sounds pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty low cost per lead. And, and anybody who's doing consumer direct on this call. Uh, and you're willing to share what your cost per closed loan is, please do. Um, you know, I do know you can make a whole lot of money at a thousand dollars 
a closed loan, you know, when you think and of you know, how much can be made. But no, but I, I want to help everybody, you know, make some decisions. And by the way, that was another takeaway from Mastermind. It was something that the, you know, one of the heads of productions, one of the top 10 largest lenders in the country made a comment that, hey, consumer, consumers and technology are blowing up the real estate industry. Zillow is an example of that. You know, so the, the world for realtors is going to change. And then he made the point that, hey, the mortgage is part of the real estate experience. And one of the things that we do better than realtors do is we aggregate and manage leads. We can convert leads better than the real estate industry. The way we use CRMs, the way we execute, we as mortgage professionals have, a, have more expertise and capability around aggregating and converting leads than realtors do. So that's one of our competitive advantages. So, you know, and when I think of Josh Metal, I think of Wally Elderberry, and I could, you know, list goes on of loan officers where part of their value prop is their conversion platform. You know, and not only how they convert at the front end, but how they extend the value over the life of the loan. So anyways, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent, but I did want to um, share that thought just to tie it in because I, I do think this is important. You know, if, if you want to have a, a long career as a referral based local loan officer, you you need to kill it at the front end. You need to kill it at the back end. And by the way, you need to get really clear on what is your unique value proposition. What are what is your specifications in a way that you can scale? I mean, this is really important stuff. Robert. Right. So. So that's your specification. Um, now what we want to do and everyone's going to do this. Take a look at the specification you wrote or the or the um, high level goal you wrote. And we're going to now we're going to walk down the staircase. And what I want you to do is find seven pillars and, and just brainstorm fast, right? As fast as you can. Don't judge. Don't do anything. Um, seven pillars that that result would um, that would create that result. Seven major pillars. So if yours is loans from realtors and that's where you want to play, what are the seven major pillars that would lead to that? If you want leads loan leads and that's the place you're going what are the seven major pillars right now you can think of that getting loan leads at a reasonable cost rest on hey by, by the way by the way guys start throwing that out there but robert would would these seven pillars would that also be okay to call them strategies yeah you know, that yeah. okay call seven, so, seven ways methods, seven strategies seven, seven ideas yeah seven ideas seven strategies that would help you with your high end goal, loans, leads, realtors, whatever it is, what's your specification and now seven strategies. And by the way, guys, if you are watching this on recording, feel free to just stop, stop the recording. And by the way, if you're on this live and you're like, okay, I, you know, trying to listen and learn and try to write, you know, for me, that I can't help it. I'm doing both all the time. Um, but if that's too much for you, you know, just listen now and come back to this. But I, I really think a breakthrough is coming soon. Um, so let's read off what we have. Um, more referrals from CPAs and financial planners, you know, Zillow leads, um, along with the cost of waiting to play for such leads. I don't know. I, I can't understand some of this. Leads that get to the loan officer first. My past customer database, you know, mining my past customer database. Um, so here's some categories. By the way, guys, keep them coming. Buy leads, and it sounds like you know Zillow, Lending Tree, whatever. You know, online leads. Oh, Facebook marketing, Facebook marketing, prospecting, past customers, trusted sources like CPAs and financial planners. Um, anyways, come, keep them coming, guys everyday prospect. So I guess just prospect. But by the way, that interview I did last Saturday with Josh Metal, where he talked about his prospecting disciplines. Again, it's currently like if you go to our YouTube page, it is in the number one poll slot as the number one interview for 2018. 
uh, just because I think prospecting is so important and how he talked about how they prepared a prospect and what their, pros what their process is, really good. It's like 10 minutes, 11 minutes long, so check it out. Um, lunch and learns. The leads that you obtain before the realtor and the amount you're willing to pay for them. Um, spheres of influence. Thank you guys. Oh, here's a new one, Jerry Fish, thank you. Um, company employees create a benefits program. Love that. Uh, by the way, just some of my favorites. I mean, my backstory was getting business from CPAs and financial planners. So I would totally be executing that strategy. I also had a pretty robust um, employee benefits program that I think Robert actually helped me come up with the idea for that. Oh, Corey, mastermind groups. So, you know, have mastermind groups. And the interview with Rick Shear, for anybody that wants to execute around realtor mastermind groups, huge strategy to get more loans from realtors. Um, by the way, I'm hearing a trend where I'm seeing loan officers will partner with a realtor and then they'll build out kind of like a B&I group where CPA, financial planner, insurance agent, you know, kind of all the people and loan officers will manage that. So, you know, you could do mastermind groups with realtors to go deeper with agents. You could do mastermind groups with realtors where you network and mastermind um, with all the, you know, the wealth team. So great idea. Robert, we got about 15 minutes left. I don't know if you want to keep going on this or you have more thoughts. Uh, we're going to stop right there. I'm going to share a story on how this works, and then we're going to get in and we're going to pick another level. So, all right, so so how this works. So I talked about the company and they said, uh, we need objection handling. Here's where we got. Well, why do you want to handle objections? Well, so we can increase our sales. Why do you want to increase sales? Well, so we can increase our profits. Why that? Well, ultimately sell the business, live in Nirvana. The, the, the level on the stairs we decided to play the game at was increase sales. Um, so instead of just handling objections, I said, okay, let's increase sales. I started asking them, what's your sales process? Almost universally, if they got, if they got a manager on the phone, um, they would actually talk to them. Eventually that manager would go, well, do you have a, a sample of the training or something? And so then, you know, so they've gone now two, three weeks. Then they grab a, uh, they had a video demo that they'd send out, they sent, send out the, the video DVD, then call back, well, what do you think about it and stuff like that. So we turned the whole thing upside down. I, I took a look at the resources. Um, I found out they had testimonials, like incredible testimonials about managers that had done it and increased their office revenue 25% in a year. Um, managers that were actually charging the realtors to take the training. So it self-funded itself. And so they had all these incredible testimonials. And um, so what we did is we kind of, I took all that stuff, amalgamated together. We changed the script to um, ring, ring. Hi, Mr. Manager. Hey, sitting here on my desk is um, a, a package on our video training that's done this and the other, but it, it's probably not right for you. Um, but if you want me to send it to you, I will. So we did like a, a little bit of a takeaway thing. And they go like, what? Well, tell me more about it. Well, well, how do you want to increase business? You want to increase business through um, increasing the production of these realtor or by recruiting more? Well, and they'd say whatever they said. And then, you know what? It, it might make sense for you. We'll send it out to you. <clears throat> so instantly, a lot more people started going like, OK, hey, send me the package. So we'd send the package out. That day, they'd run over and they'd send the fax out and go, hey, so-and-so, um, I checked in the mailroom. Your package is going out today. Oh, here's a testimonial from a guy that used it to do blank or increase this thing. I thought you might find it interesting. The next day they get a testimonial and we were a two day in these. And then the third day said, your package is arriving today. I'll be give, go ahead and look at it and I'll call you the next day. The next day we go, I'll go, I hope you've looked at it. I'm going to call you at 10 o'clock today. And, um, and then we got the call. In two weeks, sales increased 300%. The salespeople went from selling one out of 20 to one out of four. It, just like that on an $1,800 project um, or a product. Um, so that's what this kind of thinking can do. It, it shakes up what you think you can be done and what you think your resources are. So Dave, <clears throat> so we've taken leads. These guys have come up with some great different pillars that they'd like to play out. I'm gonna let you pick Dave. Um, trusted, trusted sources, um, CPAs, financial planners, uh, playing on Zillow, past customer database, 
social media of which Facebook's prime to see no, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna choke out here. <coughs> um, Instagram's making a big play. We we're just talking to a um, psychologist of all people, a teen psychologist, but Instagram is exploding for his business. Um, there's a generalized prospecting, let's go realtor meetings. So Dave, which of those, cause we're gonna go down another level now. Okay, so I, I pick one, I pick one. So right now, I mean, it's a top, it's hard for me between advisors and past customers, but I'm gonna pick past customers. And this is, this is why guys, first of all, most loan officers are leaving so many loans on the table just by jumping on that strategy. You could, for every thousand past customers, there's a hundred annual loans. So if you have 500, there's 50 loans a year that you're just leaving on the table. And then, so one, there's just immediate loans. And by the way, you own it. It's, you know, a, you can get an advisor and he could leave you or he could not be doing well in his business. But your past customers, if you own it, you control your destiny, one. Two, if you are doing past customer annual reviews right, you're gonna get leads that you can bring back to your partners, two. And then by the way, number three, Realtors are not good at managing their past customer database. So if you built a system and you did it well, you can now take that and say, hey, realtor, I'm a leader. I'm an expert at this. Let me help you, which could range from I'm just going to coach and help you, which would be good. Or I'm actually going to help you manage your past customer database and get more loans through it, which would be mind boggling. So past customers. Stuff. All right. And by, I'll, by, and by the way, we power the, the annual review. You know, so the total cost analysis, I guess I do have a horse in the race, is one of the number one strategies to be successful at that. But, but by the way, that's not why I picked it, um, but that is kind of a benefit, just full disclosure. All right, so so because what, what we want to do is get people clear. So, but for each, for everybody listening, you might have instantly gone somewhere else. <clears throat> you go, forget my past customers, I want realtors. I, you know what? The CPAs sound to, to, toasty. Um, by the way, I think everybody on here has probably downloaded and read it, but Dave's Art of Referrals book is 100% about how to get CPAs and financial planners. Um, and I think we added up, Dave, you're making 905,000 a year in referrals from CPAs and financial planners back in the 2000-ish. Uh, so that's a pretty yeah. serious production. Um, and, by, by, and by the way, folks, Silver really wrote that. He just interviewed me and made me sound smart and put kind of my business strategies in a box. So you can get it from my YouTube or from um, LinkedIn. So if you go to my LinkedIn profile, Art of Referral, and you can also go to SlideShare, do a search for Art of Referral, Dave Savage, or even Robert Silver, and check it out there too. Really good book. So, so anyway, you can all pick whatever you want based on your setup. And, and this actually like this is taking close to an hour. If I were sitting down with you, this would have been like 10 minutes as we zip through all this stuff, right? Um, one on one, and maybe we can open up the call at some point. So um, in the future, so past customers. Now, what we want to do is repeat the seven pillars or seven strategies or seven ways again. So right off the, the, the bat, Dave said uh, annual your reviews. Um, I'll throw one out with you. <coughs> Mark kids, orthodontist. Love that bill. Um, does a movie theater. They book the movie theater. They get all the orthodontist kids and their families in there and everybody signs a, a, a release. Um, what do you call it? A media release. Um, they take all sorts of pictures and then they do contests. If people post and tag a certain thing on their, on their, uh, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. Um, they'll enter, uh, they enter the people in the, uh, movie theater uh, into a contest to win whatever it is and it creates massive media <clears throat> and builds the relationships with the customers in the same way it's, it's genius so let, let's go the uh way out you know the movie theater okay so guys so start listing all the things we got six minutes you can do to get more referrals from your past customers so we call those client appreciation events and then remember folks if you want to um be the local, you know, the digital local mayor of your marketplace. That content's valuable because not only are you, you know, connecting with your customers in an emotional way, in a personal way, but then you're, you know, you're building community in a bigger way. Um, so, so, Dave, while we're filling this out, 
Yep. Fill it out, guys. Uh, ideas and strategies. Yeah. So go ahead and, and brainstorm. Start throwing them into the thing. And while you're doing that, um, I was on the phone with a loan officer. <clears throat> He's like, "Screw realtors. I hate them. I love I love dealing with uh, builders." And so his his goal was loans from builders. His specification was is he thought through it. He goes, "Well, I can actually." Um, some of the stuff that I do can bring them so many leads. If, if a um, builder can't handle 20 extra um, builds, builder loans a year, they're too small. And so we created a specification. What I need is a way to reach builders that are that can handle X number of units away in an authoritative way. And so that became his new objective. There's a lot of clarity for him. He's like, oh my word, I can go after something that a lot of people in the market aren't going for. And then it became, well, how, right? So we're starting to break it down to the pillars. How are we going to do that? And so he goes, well, I need to join this association and this association and this association, and that association. And um, so he kind of like that. And then I broke it down and said, if you had one month to do this, how would you do it? No, I love that. All of a sudden he realized, oh my word, he goes, the, um, from time to time, we've done loans with builders but we've never kept in touch with him. That, he's, he's with a larger financial institution. And he goes, I can just go into the database, pull up builders that meet these criteria and talk with them. Boom. And he goes, they already so, have a proven record and we have a relationship with them. But just so the Robert, partners hadn't been there yet. Yeah. We got, we got four minutes. So I've got a lot of things listed out. We're gonna tell you what all those ideas are and those strategies Fire. to get more loans from your past customers. Before we do that, Robert, um, how can people connect with you outside of this call? How can they get on your list? Is there any programs you have that our, our community can sign up for? What are ways for us to communicate? And then we will rip out all the ideas to close it out. All right, so so this got started. We're gonna talk, anyway, I wasn't ready for the call with, with this program and stuff. And I'm launching something as a uh, high level man, mastermind for entrepreneurs, not loan officers. So if you're a loan officer, consider yourself an entrepreneur and you want to create legendary results, you would fall into that. Um, if you're a loan officer who is happy doing loans, doesn't want to look outside the industry for ideas, it would not be for you. Um, anyway, so it's going to be Legends and Roads, and it starts off, I do a, um, uh, the first month is $1,500. I'm going to do a, a two-hour strategy consultation that'll probably be a, a spread out, you know, one month the next month. Then it goes into, um, they get access to my library, my influence library, the $2,000 influence library. They get access to the, the Star Chain Hook training, the six week training that I did. Um, they get access to the uh, breakthrough training that I've got. Um, and then on a monthly basis, it's going to be $497 a month. And it will be a it will be a mastermind in a Facebook where they get in with their questions and I will get in and actually it's a way I can work with them. That's cost effective, kind of works for everybody. Um, I can get in if they need me to look at materials, pitches um strategies they can give me a shout out and within 24 hours i'll get out there and answer them and work with them hands on you know individually one-on-one -on -one, um, as well as we're going to do group mastermind calls that are specifically with hot seats around them getting re re um, feedback from people in other high level players in other industries um, so anyway that's coming online if you want to know about that um just stover Email Stover at Robert Stover dot com. Yeah. And so, it, so put way, legends in the subject line. So I know what you're talking about. And by the way, I mean, Robert at a minimum is five thousand dollars a day consultant. So to get access to all of this and to have him as a, a mentor, I mean, I can't tell you this is a, a tremendous opportunity and forget about the cost the opportunity if it helps you get one more loan it was worth it so i'm a huge advocate so let's list off all the ideas that came out um customer appreciation events annual mortgage reviews phone calls uh newsletters email facebook by the way we're hearing all kinds of people taking their past customer database putting as a customer audience in facebook Yep, Facebook marketing, huge strategy. Listen to calls on Dennis Stover and Bill Hillstad on that. Um, God, I just went off of it. By the way, we will keep this conversation going and 
really unpack all the ideas in which you can get more cash customer business. We are running out of time. I, I do want to know what you thought of today's call. So if you could just let Stover and I know, did we surpass your expectations with values? Did you get a few takeaways? If you are a guest to this call and you want to learn more about Mortgage Coach, let me know. So please fill out this survey on the way. And, and then reminder to anybody who's watching the recording, if you thought that this was valuable, give us a like, share it with your friends. And also let us know what your breakthrough was. Like if you got clear on something that you need to do as a result of this exercise, go, you know, let us know in comments. Goes, thank you, Robert. Yeah, and, and I what, I, I, what I'd love to do, and like, again, we're running out of time, but is if they already know what they're going to do, like, oh, I need to do this, I would love to hear what they're going to do this week. Let's break it down into small steps. I, I really want to hear what they're going to do this week from that thing that they're going to pursue, whether it's annual reviews or customer appreciation or a newsletter or past customer calls, whatever it is. I want to hear what specific steps they're going to do this week, and they can kind of type them in as we're going on the way out here. All right. If you do have an idea of what you're going to do this week, put it in questions now. When I share the recording of this into our Facebook Mastermind Productivity Group, or it's actually Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Group, I'm going to share a link to this recording in there. And as you heard it, Robert would love to know in comments, what are you going to do this week? And what is a strategy that's either you hadn't thought of and you thought of it? Or it's a strategy that you're going to put more energy and focus around. Let us know. Robert, as always, man, I appreciate what you brought to the Mortgage Coach community. Thank you. Thank you.